welcome to the Crafty Diamond. I am Debbie. Today I am going to be working on my massive cross stitch conversion project where I am converting a cross stitch pattern into a diamond painting. And I do have a playlist for this. So I will put that underneath the description as well as on the right side at the eye. So you can go and look at past of my um, cross stitch conversion if you would like. I am at 11.9% and I have actually worked on this some today. I have done 295 stitches, which really doesn't sound like very much, but I hadn't honestly done a whole lot with it today. But um, I wasn't going to do this one this week. I thought, well, I'm just going to take a break and I will start back next week on my cross stitch conversion on Saturdays. And then I started working on this and I thought, you know what, why not? You guys really like it. I want to work on my cross stitch conversion. I actually was in the mood to work on it. Um, and I really just wanted to, didn't want to work on any other of my projects. And so I started working on this, got quite a bit done, and then I thought, you know what? I think I will just have some company and bring you guys along so you can work on whatever you want to work on or you can just you know, watch, listen. And, but I know that a lot of you really are interested in this project. And then you can also get quite a bit done on Saturdays while I'm working on mine. So that's what I'm going to do. So feel free to work on whatever you would like. And this is a whip and chat, which is a work in progress, but it is not like my whip and chats on Tuesdays. I do try to keep my whip and chats on my massive cross stitch conversion and then my regular whip and chat separate. And I do that because I um, want to have my whip and chats on Tuesdays, just about life updates and different things. And this, I just go over um, some of the comments that you guys have made or anything else that I can think of. So that's the main difference um, to this. And then also, you may hear me counting a little bit. I'm still, I still count on this because if you're not familiar with a cross stitch conversion, this is a blank canvas. And so you have to have a pattern and you um, have to have your own drills and it is just blank. So you're not just laying drills down. I mean, you are, but you have to lay them down like you would if you were doing a cross stitch pattern. Let me get this cover. For once on a section, I've actually had quite a bit of color blocking and I'm really excited because I am working on some kits right now that's just full of confetti and I am tired. I am tired of working on the confetti. I need a break and when I got to this I thought please don't have all of this just really confetti heavy and it's actually not so so far but I'm only going to do this one section. I'm working on six at a time. So I'm doing um, two down and then I do two other columns, which is a total of six. And that seems to work for me. I don't know what others am like to do. I know that on some, I have noticed that they were having, um, they were going much faster. And so I'd ask, you know, well, give me some tips. Why um, do you think that you are working on this faster than you initially started working on it? And a lot of people were telling me that, that what they do is that they will do a huge section at one time and they may not finish it all, but they'll start it. And they had like 15 sections plus that they actually um, had going. And I tried that and I got so confused. I didn't know where I was. I could not keep up. And so I thought, no, that's not for me because it is taking me longer since I have no clue what I'm doing. I couldn't remember what box I was supposed to be in. And so I just said, nope, forget it. I can't do this. So 
stop doing that and I am just going back to my six boxes and even if I don't finish six boxes whenever I am doing this with you guys because it does take me a lot longer to do this when I am when I am working on this and trying to talk just like I think I just may have where am I up here is where I am yes okay but and I do talk to myself too so sorry about that um, I do try to take some of that out when I am editing sometimes I just say you know what screw it and I just leave it in there um, but this is a really fun thing to do it is different um, it does make me think a little bit more and I really want to work on this more and I say this every time that I do this but I really do it's just I don't have this out if I leave this out on my table I might think about it more and I might work on it more every day than just working on it maybe once or twice a week or even once or twice a month this case it has been quite a bit longer than I had that I have worked on it so I haven't gotten very far from where I was the last time that I did this but I am hoping that over the next two weeks because I will be out for break that I'm hoping that I can do at least one section which for me that would be the the six boxes if I could do just one section a day I think that that would be really good for me and just keep doing that for two weeks I want to get a really good good jump on this to where by next year I will be able to have some completions or at least I hope that I will that's gonna do that is the plan anyway is to at least have I want to have at least 20% and I'm getting there I think I will be able to have my 20% that was the goal from the very beginning of the year and I really do think that that's not going to be a problem whatsoever to get the 20% and I really think that I will be going over the 20% at least that is what I'm hoping that I will be able to do and if this starts having more of color blocking then I definitely will be able to go through at a much faster pace than what I've been doing so that will definitely be good too and I want to start on another one but I'm not I am only going to have one of these at a time I just cannot imagine having more than one I don't think I could handle it especially with this one being so large if this one wasn't as large as it is then I definitely I wouldn't think twice about it I would go ahead and start on another one but I don't see a point in doing that when I still have a long way to go on this one so we'll see but I've had a really good week we are finally all feeling better or I should say my husband and I are feeling better and thanks to all of you for all your well wishes and your comments and I just last week was just rough to be honest but I am glad that we are all back healthy my husband was able to go back to work today so that was nice it's always hard when he's at home and I'm trying to get some things done um, especially when I'm trying to do some videos I kind of want to get ahead a little bit on some videos but it's really hard when he's home because you know he is doing something in the house or whatever and it just makes it a little bit more difficult to try to get my videos done because I want it to be quieter and it feels kind of weird when I'm doing videos and there's other people around listening 
and he's probably not listening. I doubt very seriously that he was, but it's just um, easier. Just, I don't know, I feel more comfortable when I'm doing it at home and I feel like nobody's listening to me, which is really silly, to be honest. Because I am talking to you guys. So I am talking to somebody and somebody will eventually hear this. Let's see. I've got two there. I'm working on a section now that is very colorful and I am really excited about that. Um, I think my dogs are starting to bark too. They, that goes there. And it's so hot here. We can't really do anything. My husband likes to work out in the yard and he started feeling better. He thought, well, he could get out and work in the yard a little bit. And I told him not to. I'm like, it is too hot. You do not need to get out there. You don't need to get overheated, especially when you're just, when you're getting well and you just need to take it easy. And then maybe if you're feeling better, get up early on the weekend and then maybe do something then if you want to. But I would not do anything. It's just miserable. We had been talking about wanting to start walking. And he definitely wants to just start walking again. But it's just too hot. Even in the evenings after dinner, it is still in the 90s. And the humidity here in Georgia is really bad. So that doesn't help matters. And then on top of that, it is just the really dry heat that we have. So we just don't want to walk. It's just too hot. And then in the mornings, um, during the week, he goes to work, except on Mondays. And then unless we get up super early, it is just too hot. And even the dogs have not wanted to go outside very much. And they absolutely love being outside but they just, they can't do it because it is just so hot for them. And I really do not want them outside. I have to watch them, but even now, because the heat is so bad that they don't even want to go out. So I don't have to worry about me, um, tr me remembering when to bring them in, make sure they get in because they have no interest whatsoever in going outside. And so that's kind of good too, because I really worry about them. I just don't, I just really do not feel comfortable with them out there. I've heard that dogs can get heat stroke. Um, even though they have water, they have um, water outside. They also um, have really nice shade, but it doesn't matter. They run around like crazy and I just don't, I don't like them being out there. So I will definitely be glad when it gets warmer, when it gets cooler, definitely not warmer. When it gets cooler, we are really looking forward to the fall. That is my favorite time of the year. And I'm trying to see what diamond paintings that I have that I want to do for the fall. I don't want to buy anything. I want to see what I have that I can actually do that will be fall themed and that is going to make me feel like fall even though it's 100 degrees outside but you know we'll see i've got some things i want to do that um some some diamond paintings i definitely want to work on and then i also am going to be participating in a couple of events in August, so that will be nice too. I'm trying to go with smaller canvases, not extremely small, but smaller for me. It's just nice sometimes to be able to do that and not just concentrate on my larger ones, but I have so many large ones in my stash that I kind of need to, to get those done. And then I really want this to start looking like something so I can see that it's definitely going to look like something. I was watching Add More Zest, Rebecca, yesterday. She was doing her cross-stitch conversion. 
and hers is gorgeous. It's a little dreamer's tree. That's what it's called. And it's really pretty. You can tell what it is, but she's close to being done. And hers is a max color. And that makes me want to do a max color. I don't want to do a huge canvas, but I think a max color would be really nice that I would like to do. So that one is or max color is definitely on my radar for next time. So I need to decide what I want to do and then start keeping my drills, keeping those separate, even though it'll probably be at least next year before I get started on it, middle of next year. Um, let's see. Okay. I need to make sure I have plenty of the colors that I need for this. I know I do. Okay, let me log in again on my computer. It has been a while since I went over the comments. The last time that I did this, I did the tags where I was tagged from Diamond Painting Anonymous. And so it's been about a month since I've gone through and looked out, looked at all of the comments and I had to go all the way back to whip and chat number 65. And that was when I was getting ready for the retreat. So I'm not going to read all of those about the retreat, but I kind of looked at them. I'm going to do a synopsis and, and just um, let you guys know what that's about. And we'll see how that goes. And I also would like to know how, Rebecca with Add More Zest, how she can read and diamond paint at the same time. I just, I can't do that. I, um, I've tried and I look at it and then maybe she just looks at it, she memorizes it and she does it that way. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but I cannot do that. So it takes me longer when I do this, but I'm okay with that. If you guys are okay with it being a little bit longer, I am too. I do stop around an hour, even if I don't finish the section, because I don't want to go past an hour necessarily, but I do want to go through all of these comments. So let me put this one down. I don't lose my place. Okay, so going back, I'm going to go to the end here and see. Um, It's not loading anything up yet. Okay. So Cynthia at 774 gave heart. So thank you so much, Cynthia. Um, Kay says um, that I'm right, that business attire is a thing of the past, unfortunately. Um, she cannot believe some of the clothes that people think are appropriate to wear in a work environment, especially women. Um, Kay comes from the old school dress for success mythology, where appearance is a matter, where appearance does matter. And um, personally, she enjoys dressing nicely for work on those days that she needs to be in the office. And what all of that stems from is that I went to a work event where students competed. And that was back in June and students were required to wear appropriate dress attire and it wasn't business casual. It was appropriate dress attire. And I asked how others felt about that. If they felt that the dress code where men wear suits, if that is still a thing, and the majority of you um, definitely agreed with me that it's not that you do not have to wear suits anymore for the men and that women don't have to wear dress clothes necessarily. And, you know, I, I remember those days when I was in banking and we had to wear suits even women had to wear dress suits most of them were um, a skirt with a jacket and that was the thing it was expected when you go to work that you dress for success and that you looked nice that you didn't come like you were just you know out of the shower which i have seen that a lot in some of my my classes 
but I also, I was surprised by how some of my students have dressed when they came in. Now, with the event that I had to go to, the event did require, as I said, business dress. And I was on a, they called it a welcoming committee, but it wasn't really welcoming. You didn't welcome um, students, but you made sure that students that were going to compete, that they had the appropriate outfit on. And if they didn't, then you had to tell them either go back to your hotel room and change clothes if you have anything to change into, or if you don't have anything to change into, then what you need to do is um, you're gonna lose five points from the rubric. And so most of them, you know, there were just a couple of students that didn't have the appropriate shoes or that did not have a, a dress shirt or they looked kind of slouchy. And so I hated being the one that had to go and tell them, you know, I am so sorry. And I feel bad because these are college students. College students don't have money. And most of the college students, not all of them, but some college students, their parents are paying their way and their parents are doing good to pay for tuition and books and you know food and room and board and all of those things and so they really don't have the money to go and buy clothes especially you know really nice dress clothes and so i felt bad and so my question was to you guys did you think that the students had to they should have had to wear these clothes should the dress code be amended? And even my boss said she thought the dress code should be amended because even going into some of the really nice companies um, such as Google, um, they do not require dress code. Um, their dress code is very casual and laid back. And so she was, you know, telling me that and she said, there's other companies that she had been to that was very laid back. And so she thinks that they're going to have to eventually change the dress code for this event that um, we participate in. And so I definitely agree with that, but it was nice. I don't dress um, up that often because I don't have to. And which really, I guess, is not an excuse. I should start dressing, wearing a dress at least once a week when I go into work, but you know, I don't. And it was nice that we did dress up. I wore a, or dresses the majority of the time that I was there or a really nice pantsuit. And so I did enjoy that. But as far as deducting for students, you know, as long as they had a pair of khakis and your know, nice pair of pants or a nice shirt, then, you know, I think that should have been okay. I don't think the shoes should have really been an issue, but that was a really large issue. And so that's where these comments are coming from. And then Elizabeth also says, um, she enjoys hearing about my family and the national contest. And she was sorry, my student didn't win, um, have fun at the retreat. And she has cousins. Um, who she doesn't speak to, who lives in Ohio, and she's glad that my daughters are doing well. And then she said, happy anniversary. It was mine and my husband's 12th anniversary, and I was on my work event, but he was really good about it. I, um, I felt bad, but we did end up going out and having a nice dinner um, later on. So it was something that you know, we had to deal with because you know, it's work. And that was part of my job. Um, let's see. Um, um, let's see. I may have read this already. Okay. Um, and also at that time, Elizabeth was working on Cafe um, Terrace at night. And then Diane's diamond painting journey um, says that she is glad I had a good time at the convention. She's sorry that my student didn't place. Um, she said, at least I had a great experience. 
And she also agrees with the dress clothes that students may not be able to afford to buy them. And they should relax a little bit. Um, and then also she wished me a happy belated anniversary, have fun at the retreat. Um, and she wishes that she had something like that over in Belgium. And I did have a wonderful time at the retreat. And speaking of retreats, since that has popped up on here, I was listening to Mindy this morning. I've gotten behind on some of the, the videos that I like to watch as well. So I'm really behind. I have a long list of videos that I want to listen to. And hers was one of them on a whip and chat. And she mentioned on that whip and chat that she is opening her and Angie, who's going to be her co-host, the retreat, her Michigan retreat. She is going to open it up on Saturday. So that is going to be the day that you see this. She is opening up for, for um, enrollment for that. Now she's taking the first 40, I believe, and it's first come, first serve, but you can get on a waiting list. Now, I, I don't think I am going to go to that one. I have really been thinking long and hard about that, which one that I want to go to. I, if, I, if I go to either one, but I can only go to one. So because of the expense and me having to fly and transportation and everything whenever I get there. So I really would like to go to Mindy's and I am still on the fence. I may end up changing my mind, but more than likely I am not going to sign up for that one mainly because, and I would love to, I would really, really like to go to that one, but the problem with that is the timing. It is the first part in May. That is right when our semester is going to end for the spring. And so that kind of puts me in a little bit of a bind because of work. And so I just don't know if I will be able to go to that one as much as I would love to. It's just... It's just the timing and that's it, just the timing. But if you guys are interested, I just wanted to go ahead and let you know that I did hear about that. If any of you are interested in going to Michigan and going to hers, I have not heard anything about when Great Lakes Retreat will open. I think sometime in September or so. And I will probably on that one, if I go to any retreat, that's probably the one that I'm going to go to just for the fact of the, of the date. But even then, that date's not really good because that also kind of goes in with work. And so I don't know. I'm just not really sure if that's something that is going to work out for me or not. So um, that's another thing of we'll see. But I, I need to look at the price, too, because they're adding a day on that one. And I did have a wonderful time. I really did. And I loved meeting a lot of you. Um, I met April. And she is just so much fun. And she was my secret Santa. And so I really would love to go back. But it honestly depends on if I am, if I'm able to because of work and then also how much that it costs. Because when I was adding everything up, it was very expensive to go to this retreat for me, mainly because I had to um, pay for, you know, car. And so that was really expensive. And so I just, I don't know mainly because it wasn't even really so much the airline. The flight was a little pricey, but I got that when it was on sale. So that wasn't that bad. But the problem is just the transportation. When all is said and done, it's, you know, it's, it's not cheap. 
but I would love to go again. So let me know if what you guys are, if you guys are planning on going to either one of them, what you're planning on doing. Maybe I can figure something out about it being less expensive. I could drive, but that's a long drive. It would be too far for me to drive to Michigan. It's a long drive for me to go to Ohio. So um, I don't know if I want to drive that far by myself, to be honest. But we'll see. I, I did have a wonderful time. And it's something that I did for myself. It's something that I would normally never, ever do. And I was proud of myself for doing it. So it may be something that I definitely decide that I want to, to do. But let me know what you guys are planning on doing. I know it's hard to be thinking about next year, especially when we just came back from the retreat, but it is, it's happening. One, two, that one there. So that is, okay. And then, um, Kimba says, I'm glad you're doing well. You get, it sounds very exciting. Um, she was tired listening to everything that we had to do at our event. I'm tired of, when I'm thinking of it, it really wears me out. Um, Barb says, enjoy the retreat. Can't wait to hear all about it. And then Deborah says, she hopes to have lots of fun at the retreat. I'm looking forward to hearing about it when I get back. Uh, Lori said the same thing. And then um, Carrie mentioned the weather. We had crazy, crazy weather here when we were leaving our event. I mean, it was nasty. And I told my students, I was driving, said, you know, I would prefer to just sit here and wait until this passes over. We were downtown. I don't like downtown anyway. I was in a work car. So I wasn't in my own car, which that didn't help matters either. And decided, well, I should probably wait out the storm. And we did. We could have gotten home um, earlier, but I just did not want to have to deal with the storm. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm not one of those that like to drive in rain. I don't like it at all, to be honest. I don't like driving at night. I especially don't like driving at night and in the rain. That kind of puts a damper on both. And it was getting later at night and it was raining. So I thought, no, this is not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. So decided I'm just going to stay, park my little butt, and we'll just, we'll wait it out. And that's what we did. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so that was chat 65. Let's see, where am I? Um, I'm having to go back in. So give me just a second. That was 65. I kind of have all these chats. Um, no, that's 66. Okay, 66. Okay, so with my Live and Chat 66, that one I went over the retreat in a lot of detail. And so I had several that did respond and said that they were so glad that I enjoyed the retreat and that there were some that I met. I met Dip in Time. We actually roomed together and she's a lot of fun. And so Rhonda and I hung out quite a bit. And then I also met several others. And so that was a lot of fun. Found out there's also a couple of people that live fairly close to me. Lori actually um, lives in around the same city that I do, which I found very funny that, you know, I had to go that far in order to meet somebody that lives close to my house. So that was, that was kind of comical that I had to drive that far, spend that much money, and then ended up meeting somebody who lives close to me. Like, okay, I should have been able to meet them and not have to go all the way to Ohio to do it. But 
that's how it goes sometimes. I'm going to put this one here. Um, but let me see, I have all these black right here. Are any of you going to be doing the, the cross stitch conversion event that's going to happen? And I keep, I don't know why, I cannot remember the month. I'm getting all the months confused. I think, I think it's October, maybe it's November, um, but I guess I need to look at that and see so I can tell you guys exactly what it is and not me trying to remember. But I have so many events I want to do for the remainder of the year. And so I'm getting all these events confused. But I am definitely, whatever month it is, it doesn't matter. And whatever month that it is, I am going to definitely participate in that. I think it'll be a lot of fun that the community is getting together and they're all working on cross-stitch conversions. I think that'll be really cool. And if you are, let me know what you're going to be working on. I'll be working on this same one. Um, unless I talk myself into it, which I could very well do, talk myself into doing another one. If I did one, it would have to be very small. But then I feel like if I did that, that I'm not giving this one fair justice. And I am trying, I am trying really, really hard to not have so many whips. I'm trying to finish up projects. And I have come to realize I was going through some of my whips that I've put in a closet that have been there for well over a year because I haven't taken the time to go back to them. And I kind of realized that once I put a whip up, I don't necessarily am motivated to go back to it. I don't know if you guys are that way, but never had really thought about it. And then I started looking at those. I thought, I'm going to look and see what all that I have in my whips that I just kind of just put over to the side and just kind of neglected. And I want to start bringing one out. Most of those are larger. And once I finish my Josephine wall, bring you know those out start working on them to get them completed then i started looking at them and i thought you know do i really want to do this one is this something that i'm even interested in any longer and so i don't know i don't know if i'm going to offer to sell them to my neighbors i have a couple of neighbors that have seen some of my older ones that you can no longer get and they wanted to know when I was going to finish it, what I was going to do with it. And so I thought, you know, I might look through these and then decide. There are about four or five of them. There's one that I know I'm going to keep. That one is, I think it's called House on the Cliff. And that one is so pretty. And I have gotten a lot done on it. So I want to do that one. It's huge. Of course it is. But... I definitely going to keep that one. I have a Josephine wall that I've already started that was Diamond Art Clubs and I still have a long way to go but now it's like okay Diamond Art Clubs since I don't have Josephine wall anymore is it really a good idea for me to sell these when I can't get them again but then I like for Josephine Wall, I love Diamond Painting Deutschland. So I'm thinking, well, instead of doing the one I've already started, there's the same one that Diamond Painting Deutschland has. And I thought, you know, I would really like that one. I'm not going to do the same one twice on that particular kit because it is so large. I don't want to do... Josephine Wall twice. Once is definitely enough. So, I don't know. How do you guys feel? If you have whips that are really old, do you feel that you're just not interested in going back to them? Or, or you just will when you're in the mood to go back to them? But it's like now, I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, I'd rather have a new start. 
and I'm not gonna have a new start if I have all these whips that are in my stash. I need to go ahead and do something with them. And so I've been kind of thinking about what do I really want to do? Do I really want to do those? Do I want to keep them and just see? And I thought about, because they haven't asked me anymore in a while. So I thought, well, I could just keep these and then I can see what I want to do later on. If I see that next year that I'm just not interested in doing those, if I just have no interest whatsoever in going through and doing my diamond paintings that I've already started, maybe that is an indication of, well, perhaps you need to do something else. You need to do something with those. Let somebody else enjoy them. Let them have the happiness of finishing it. I have the happiness of starting on something else and possibly getting some finishes done. Um, here are my two grays. There's a lot of black ones. This one goes. Hmm. Let's go there. That just looked kind of funny. Okay. I am moving right along on this. This is going to be so pretty. I am going all the way across with this. My goal before next week, before you see this, is that I am at the end of these first two rows here. And then I can go ahead and start back on the other side and try to get back in somewhat of a order. Gosh, I'm going to have to remember 907. This is almost empty. I hope I have more of these. I know I do. I know I bought, I bought enough to complete this project. So I just have to make sure I remember to fill these up. I am also, my glue dot's also dying on me. I've been using it for a long time. So I'll probably have to get another glue dot here before too long. I'm thinking on my whip and chat next week. Not this whip and chat, but my, my Tuesday whip and chat. I am thinking, I don't know how this will go, but I want to see if Paige would like to diamond paint with me. She's been working on one for a very long time, which is fine. Um, but she wants to get it finished. She's been wanting me to do it for her. I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it because it's yours. You have worked really hard on this and I want you to see it through. So I might see, she likes to dining paint with me sometimes. We can do it on the dining room table. So that way we have plenty of space, but I think that would be kind of fun. She could diamond paint with me. And then she can also say a few things if she wants to. She's kind of shy, so I don't know if she will, but I think that would be kind of cool to have her on. I've never had her on my channel before. So I think that would be fun to have her on my channel and see how she likes that. And I have to say, and I'll probably say this again on Tuesday, but this is a really strange season for me because we saw school buses yesterday and today. They're working on their routes and usually they stop by the, our house. They honk. It just shows that that's what they're going to do on Monday when school starts, but no, they won't be doing that for us because I have no children that will be starting school. And that feels very, very strange. It just, I don't know, it just blows my mind, honestly, how strange that it feels. And I don't know why it feels strange, but it really does. It just feels, it's different. Because I'm just used to the kids going to school. 
Madison will be going to school in South Dakota. She's going to start going back to school again for medical. And that's still different. It's not the same as a school bus coming and picking your kids up. And then I'm always nervous the first few days. Make sure that Paige got home okay and everything was good. But it's just, it's different. It is very, very different. And I guess I'm okay with it being different. I mean, I don't have much of a choice, but um, we were going to go shopping today. And I started thinking about it and I told Paige, I don't think we need to go shopping because a lot of people are going to be shopping for back to school and we're going to be in all that mess. So we both agreed, probably not a good idea to go shopping. So we're not, but it just, it just feels strange because normally that would be me out there trying to find all the things that the kids need. And there was always something with both of them that I had to struggle trying to go to a gazillion stores, trying to figure out what they needed. They don't tell you until right when school starts. So you're rushing around where we always were trying to figure out, you know, okay, well, now what am I going to do? I got to find this stuff that the kids need. So it's just, it's crazy. So that's kind of where I am this week. And I'm sure I'll be okay, you know, next week. And I feel bad for the new moms who um, their children are starting like kindergarten. Um, I feel bad for them because I remember those days too. I cried and cried and cried um, when I dropped both of mine off. They didn't have to ride the bus. I dropped both of them off. But that was rough. It was really rough to drop my babies off. And now it's like, I don't have any babies to drop off. So I don't know if that's good or bad. It's just different. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just something that's totally different. It's just something that I'm going to have to get used to. And especially the other thing with Paige being home more, that is going to be something that I'm going to have to get used to as well. But she'll be busy. She's got her program that's going to be starting up. And she is going to be really busy with it. So it's all going to be good. Everything is going to work out just fine. Okay, this is looking good. I'm almost finished with the top half of this case, which is a good thing. That always tells me when I get the top half finished, I'm close to finishing because I haven't used that many on the bottom, but I can definitely see how this is coming out. It is coming out so pretty. I still have a lot more to go, making sure you guys can still see everything. I had to stop for just a few minutes. My battery was showing low, so I wanted to go ahead and get that charged up and also had a couple of things I need to check on, but I am back and I am getting close to finishing this section, which is really cool. I'm trying to figure out where I am. I hate when I stop and then trying to get back on track. I also went ahead and put some more putty in my pen while I was at it. I've been using that glue dot for a very long time. I'm really surprised how long that glue dot has actually held up. It's been a long time. I have been doing quite a bit of diamond painting this week towards the end of the week. It's been kind of nice. Let's see, I need to go over. That's it right there. And I will update you guys on my diamond paintings next week when I do my whip and chat. And then also, on Thursday, I will have my month in review, and I am really excited for my month in review this time. I um, am still working 
on a couple of diamond paintings that I could possibly finish by um, the end of this month. If not finished, definitely get close to it. So I'm definitely excited for that. That way I can start on something else. I need to find something that is going to be very small, but a lot of color blocking. I'm looking in my stash to see what I can actually do that would work for that, um, just to get my mind set back and to not have to think so much on all this confetti that I've been working on. So that's gonna be something that I really need to look at this weekend, and I think I'll be able to do it. And I want to thank all of you that did comment on my chat regarding the retreat. I did have a wonderful time. It seems like forever ago since I've been at the retreat and it really wasn't that long ago, but it goes by fast. Time just flies, at least for me anyway. This summer has just been crazy. Just really has gone by fast. I guess because I actually had a lot going on, which I never do. So that's kind of funny. And then didn't help that I got sick, probably because I had too much going on. Um, let me see, I still have all of those. I'm not sure what all of that is. That's going over here, there. I don't know if it gets easier or not, or more difficult the more that you fill these up, because then you have to figure out exactly where you are. So on some of this, it seems like it just takes a lot longer. I am going to call this one good. It has been, I think, close to an hour. I've kind of gotten sidetracked since I had to stop and then start again, but be looking for more videos. And especially on Thursday when I have my video for the month in review. Can't believe that July is almost over. It seems like July just started and here we are, it's almost over. But that will be out there and then also have some other upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until next time, happy diamond painting. Bye.